Hiya, welcome to another video. Um, we're at Cusworth Hall today. Well, the outskirts of it. Um, we don't want to get too close to the actual hall. Um, we thought we'd take the Femi out because there's been a major firmware update to the Femi. Um, and we're a bit sick of filming with the uh, Mini 2. <laughs> We've done so many films with that. Uh, but basically, yeah, we want to see what the improvements are in the latest firmware update, whether it's basically made any difference to the smart tracking, made any difference to the horizon, whether it's now level. Um, so it always has a tilted horizon problem. Uh, whether it's got any better video quality. Um, just a few things, you know, we'll go through all different things and um, explain that as we're going. Uh, but yeah, we want to have a fly around the pond or lake or whatever it is. Um, and just see how, how it's looking really. Um, so I'm going to go into settings as you always have to do on the Femi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, and basically I'm going to set the settings to, um, I'm going to set it to video quality high. Um, and I go back out of that. Uh, metering mode center. Metering mode I think is basically the focus. You know, in the middle of the picture it will basically be more focused than the, the outside. We're going to do H.264, high video quality, auto white balance. Um, start the recording. There we go. Should be recording now, hopefully. Um, we've got a full SD card, I think. So I think we're all good, hopefully. Um, let's see if it will take off. So, where's the takeoff button? So used to using the uh, Mavic drones again at the moment. <laughs> okay, so, bring it forward. Bring it towards Rachel. Hang on, bank across. Let's have a good look. So do a pirouette again, as we do. Do you want it to go up a bit, Rachel? It's not a Mavic drone, so it doesn't stay locked to the air. Um, you know, it, you know, Mavic drones tend to sit perfectly in the air, whereas these move about a slight bit. But um, yeah, they're pretty good. You know, again, you know, it's it's a really good drone for the money. So, but I'm going to take it up, um, and we're going to have a look around. So we get like up to get up to say 50 meters first, and then we'll we'll have a look around once we're up at 50. Shouldn't be anything up in the sky that should bother us. Right, so we're at 50 meters now. So I'm going to spin round. Um, okay. And um, sometimes you know, there's the hall. And drop the camera down a bit. Sometimes if you have issues with the propeller blade, sort of like cutting into the video, which I think you've probably seen a lot of the time with our videos, the horizon looks a bit tilted to me still, to be honest. Um, but um, you know when you when you've got the propeller blades showing slightly in the video um, that's to do with the the height of the camera so if you drop the gimbal down a little bit you'll basically cut out that problem but yeah we definitely got a tilted horizon I'd say actually that's yeah that's good so, so you tilt it down uh, but there's Cusworth Hall and that's it we're, we're yeah so it's in auto I think it's in auto mode so it won't so it should be okay. You could set it to sunny day. Um, the, the reason for having auto sunny cloudy ETC um, is that when you're doing, um, doing filming, if you set it to cloudy or sunny, it will stay in that exposure. It won't keep changing. You, you, you'll notice that with ours, if we were to fly towards the sun um, and away from the sun, you, you might see a change in the, in, in the, in the, in the, the video will slightly step where you'll see that the brightness change slightly and that's because um, of the the motor so we're in auto auto will change it for you based on how you're doing a lot of professionals would put it in sunny or cloudy or whatever the, the conditions were for that day because they want to they want to basically expose the video correctly a lot of hobby type you know sort of users of drones are not going to worry about that sort of thing they just want reasonable film uh, quality um, and that's what we hope to get so, so I'll drop the I'll drop it down yeah, it's quite a nice little lake isn't it you know I'll maybe bring it back up slightly again and we just sort of um, let's have a look around see what we can see sweep around the area um, let's have a look around do a 360 
Um, but basically, yeah, the, you know, so you've got different modes and the auto mode, um, it will, you might see the changes in brightness as we're going round. Uh, one thing to do is to keep your sort of camera a bit lower. You don't want, the, you don't want too much of the sky. So if I just, if I just lift my camera up slightly, I think you're sort of looking for around about that. I don't think you want to go much more um, because you'll get, you might get the propellers kind of like affecting the video. And what we, what we, th we worked that out basically is I think it's the reflection off the re propellers onto the, onto the, um, the video camera. So that, that's something to consider if you're picking between say like a Mavic drone, uh, uh, you know, like a DJI Mini 2 or uh, a DJI Mavic Air 2. I haven't seen that happen as much as on a Femi. So Femi's cheaper for a very powerful drone. It's very, it's, it's a very good quality drone for the money. Um, but you do, I think that there are a few little bits around the edges where I think that the Mavics just, they've just been a little bit designed better. So yeah, we'll continue spinning around. I think we will see, I mean, I've got sunglasses on, so I'm probably not seeing this as well as, uh, as uh, it probably could be on the screen. Uh, but yeah, there's the hall. Um, so you could probably fly a bit towards the hall. Let's have a look. Hopefully we're higher than those really high trees over there. Uh, but yeah, we're having a look at the hall. Don't want to get too close to it. You know, want to maintain a reasonable distance of like 100 meters, something like that. Right, so yep, just scan around the area. But yeah, that's basically, you know, I don't want to go too close to those houses over there. The Femi is a very fast drone, so it will basically, it will motor towards these places at like 30 odd miles an hour. So be mindful of that when you're flying because you will basically, yeah, look, it's up there. Um, you will, you will move quickly around with this drone. It's a very fast drone. Uh, but yeah, basically what, what we want to do is have a look to see uh, whether the film quality is any better than what we what we got previously with the previous updates because some of the updates were for the camera and flight controls have been updated um, I think we're getting better signal actually I think we're getting better signal to the drone um, there was battery updates I think there was a bit there's quite a lot has been updated about this drone um, and it does seem to be a little bit better to me I just know if I can I just <laughs> I might take the sunglasses off in a minute so I can see more. <laughs> um, but basically, yes, I think, I, I don't know about the crooked horizon because to me, I don't know, that's, I mean, I've been, I've been scanning around and when you scan around, that kind of sorts out the crooked horizon. So like, you know, basically banking it to the left or the right or spinning it round, it seems to, it seems to correct that horizon issue. So, um, but basically, yeah, I mean, try and, spin back round hang on no back this way i think Ooh, that was fast back off a bit uh back off a bit from the uh from the lake there is it a lake or is it a pond i think on the map it said pond so um hang on what's going on there is it moving back yeah it is moving back so you can see the pond um right i'm gonna put my <laughs> sunglasses off for a second because i want to see what we're getting here it's very difficult because yeah, so we got for, we've actually got sun for once in the UK so it's actually quite hard to see what we're doing so we're back to sort of Bulgarian style um, sort of quality of view <laughs> um, not with the same temperature of course it is definitely not um, 30 degrees um, but yeah we're getting good views here so and I don't want to go too far and the signals doing okay I'm not pointed directly at the drone so if I was to point the you know at the drone maybe I'll get better signal um, but yeah, but no, what I might do is I might get it to return home and then I want to have a look at some of the features like the tracking features, whether it can track me just around this area and see if we can sort of, you know, just see if there's any improvements in that. Um, and basically, you know, that, that's the kind of thing we want um, to test really, because those were the features that most let it down, I'd say, in the last uh, firmware. So hang on, is it returning home? It is returning home, nice and slowly, uh, but yeah, it's coming back. Uh, but yeah, we, we want to see whether there's been any genuine improvements or is this just a number update? Um, so let's give it a go and, and see where we get to. It's returning. 
it's returning so okay so it's filming uh, it's definitely yeah we have got good SDR I was just checking on the screen we've got basically um, 20 uh, here we go yeah it's right over us now so that's good it's coming back it's actually busying up around here which is a bit <laughs> awkward we don't want too many people about so we're kind of gonna have to wait for people to move through I think so I might I might cancel the auto return so I'm gonna cancel that I don't want it to come down basically so it's sat directly above us um, can I drop the camera right down to look down towards us? That's where we are. <laughs> so it's right above us now. Um, but basically, yeah, we've got a few people coming through. So what I want to do is I want to kind of bring it, bring it down a bit. So let's bring it down. It should be actually where it thinks is over the pad because it was like kind of returning home and it had stopped. So. Let's bring it down, bring it down, drop the camera, I might make the camera go up a little bit. So it's looking towards me, yep, okay, move it, move it forward, yep, so there we go, there we go, right, so bring the camera up. Hello. <laughs> so that's us, that's, that's, that's us on the camera now. So, right, now what features do we want to do? So basically, yeah, if I just explain this, you tap on the icon, the furthest right, it, it, I think some reviewers called it a monkey icon. Uh, tap on that. Uh, and basically, I wanna try the smart track feature. Um, so let's see, trace, okay. Right, so now please drag a rectangle on the target. That's my rectangle there on me. And then you tap go on the screen. Flight height's too low, so we're gonna have to go up a bit. Drop the oh yeah, it should keep the camera on you. So that's a good sign that it's actually keeping the camera on me. Then you tap go on it, and you basically then, it should now be tracking me. And here we go. So is it following me? Yeah, I think it is. I think it is following me. Now, either I was really bad at reviewing these features in the last video, or basically that's an improvement over the last one. So it's actually following me. And I think, I don't know if I realized last time that you had to tap on the actual go, um, but I must've managed it because it did work. Um, but yeah, I would say that is, I would say that's tracing, that is tracking me. Um, it's not as slick as the Mavic Air. You can't like, Let's see if it see if it basically tracks me now. It is tracking me now, isn't it? It's still tracking me. So, oh, it's gone red now. Oh, hang on, it's lost me. It's lost me. So no, it, it, it's it's not as smart, I would say, as the Mavic Air. Trace is done. It wasn't done. <laughs> it really wasn't. Okay, on. Let's pick up the camera. Is it? See if it can see where I am by picking up the camera. Um, yeah, there I am. Okay, let's try again. Let's try another trace. <laughs> uh, actually, yeah, let's try profile. Draw a rectangle around me. Right, it's got me. There you go, right. So, what does pro profile should basically, I think, go around me, or it should always, right. So, hang on, let's go over here. What's it doing? So it should follow me. And I think the whole idea is it will always keep the camera on me. So be careful, I don't want to go into any trees or anything. Uh, it's sort of flashing red. Maybe it doesn't have the distance. Um, so far, it's kind of, well, it should move back. Should it move back? Yeah, I think it should move back and it should keep the camera on me. Um, so let's go forward. I don't think you can run. It's not something you can run, nah, look at that. It's lost you straight away. Well, I mean, you can blame me, but really the drone should probably be able to, it's just not intuitive. It's not like the Mavic Air where you feel like it's kind of working with you. Uh, but yeah, it's basically not tracking me there, is it? Hang on, am I even in shot now? Probably not, uh, but let's have a look. Has it got me? Am I even on? No. Hang on, now I'm going to lift, lift it up. Am I there? I should be there. No, there I am. Okay, so that doesn't work. In my mind, it doesn't work. But 
Um, let's try something else. Okay, let's try the lock. Now, that sounds pretty mental, so it should, basically. Please drag a rectangle to the target. The camera will follow your target with fixed perspective and speed. Okay, right. Now, right, I've locked it. Okay, can I go towards the drone? From a fit, I suppose it's from a fixed perspective. Yeah, it's not moving in the sky, I'd say. Maybe if I'm going backwards, will it follow me? It doesn't seem to be doing much. It's quite hard to walk like this. Does it, does it lock itself in the sky or, oh, hang on. No, I think you've got to, I think it will spin round you or circle round you. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. So this will, this will basically spin round you and you go, yay, look at me. I'm being tracked. Um, oh, it's stopped now. I think it got confused for a second. Those ladies walked behind me and I think it got confused between me and them for a brief moment. Right, it's spinning now, it is, it is going round, it is going round. But it's going all over the place. It is, it's rocking side to side um, in the air. It's very weird, very weird. That's a very weird feature. <laughs> that is certainly not um, similar to Mavic Air, I would say. Um, it's, it's bizarre, it's kind of, it's not sure if it's got me or not, I don't think. I know it has, it's kind of, it goes amber, it goes green. It, it, on, on the screen, you can see it's like amber now. It doesn't really know if it's me and it might be the sun. The sun is behind the drone and sort of pointed at me. And maybe the sun is causing it to struggle. So yeah, I, I again, I don't think the smart track features are great there. Um, I'm just trying to see if there's any other features in here. I wouldn't say that, I wouldn't say there's really any new features and I don't think they particularly improved that. They're still labeling it beta. So I think the fact they're still labeling that beta, it just doesn't bode well, does it? For the drone basically for smart track features. So yep, that is a, that is a, that's a bit of a shame. I, I don't know. I don't know what they've improved. I mean, we haven't had much signal issues, so maybe the signals improved a little bit. Um, not that we had major signal issues with the Femi, but um, yeah, I'm not, not sure that's really achieved much anyway. So take it up. Let's have a look over the lake. Oh, hang on. All right. So pick your camera up. Always try and remember which way you're doing your camera. Yeah, that's a shame. But I mean, I suppose a lot of the peop people who are going to buy this drone, are they buying it for the smart track features or are they buying it for like a capable drone that can fly around, get good footage of swans, of ducks, of drone reviewers? You know, is that is that what this drone's for? I think it is really. I think a lot of these additional features are kind of cool, but do they really use it? A lot of people don't really use those features, I don't think. So another thing we can try, um, I think we need to go a bit higher so let's get up a bit higher so we're above the trees. Uh, I want to try and see if I can have a look at the orbit mode and see if we've got any better features on that. So just trying to have a look at that. Um, so what I want to do is I want to kind of get a good vantage point. But basically, yeah, we're going again into the monkey icon with a hat. Um, I don't know why they call it a monkey icon. Let's have a look again. Yeah, I can see. It is kind of very similar to the MailChimp style logo. <laughs> okay, right, so let's do an orbit. Uh, okay, so again, you've got to fly to the center. It's not a, like a DJI where you can sort of point at something and say, I want to fly around that. So that mound looks pretty good there. That mound or island in the middle of the, the middle of the, uh, the lake thing there so I'm wondering if we can fly to the center fly to the center of the lake and then what you do I think is you say please try to, to set the center so we're setting the center right okay so that is the center right how do you say I want to set that center yeah I think you just do you just tap on the screen I don't know setting center all ah, right there you go so you tap on the setting center uh 
dialogue I don't know it doesn't really look like a button so now you fly away from it now we did this around Buzz Ludger before in Bulgaria and it worked quite well um, so whether this will work we'll get like a basically like 100 meters away 110 meters yeah that's the radius then I think you tap that again and you say flight speed say six meters a second I found that three was quite slow um, you don't do free heading you set it to center if you want to if you want the camera to look at the center of the image uh, of the of the video that you're doing then you set center so you do uh, then you set go and it should now start orbiting around right so I'm just looking up in the sky at it just make sure that it's starting it is it's quite slow so you can you know just check make sure it's above the trees um, but it looks like it's above the trees I think we're all right um, I think a lot of this as well is just working out how something works working out how to get the best you know like working out when you tap go like what you know just what buttons do you press things like that that's part of the problem with these drones they all kind of do it slightly differently I found the DJI drones to be a bit more um, can I drop the camera down a little bit I probably can get a better view of that so of the lake there or pond if you can make out any swans in there I don't know if it's uh, if it's possible to do that now what happens if I oh hang on what's that doing oh yeah that's your exposure rating so um, yeah the, the little on the controller you've got on the, the the right hand side there's like a button behind and you can change your EV which is like your exposure value basically you can drop it up or down so it'll make the, the picture so if I went down look you're basically you're compens you're making it brighter you're opening the shutter more um, if I go down the other way you're making it darker you see so you're making it a bit darker there um, okay so I'm gonna bring it back up should be it should basically be auto but yeah if you find your your image is looking a bit dark then on a cloudy day especially you can use that that feature to basically up you know you can let more light in and basically get a brighter video um, so yeah a, a, a professional videographer if you like would definitely do that they would they would set everything they would set the white balance they would set you know different settings so yeah it's come fully around now um, so it's done a it's done a full turn I'll just bring the camera back up a bit so you can see um, yeah so I think it would keep going round forever if you leave it to go round so I'm gonna stop it now okay yeah so there we go um, yeah so um, I, I I don't know what's changed technically <laughs> with this um, to me I don't know the, the, the horizon isn't terrible it was never a deal breaker for me I, I kind of I watched a lot of reviews before I bought it because um, when I when I first started these uh, you know before I started these videos I really wanted to know what the best sort of like the first sort of functional drone was I wanted to know like you know because I'd had toy drones and I kind of take them up you get really terrible footage um, you don't you can't really control them you don't know what's going on you don't know um, you know they're not very good they're just basically they're, they're you'll just pay like hundred and fifty dollars and it won't really do a very good job and so I kind of realized that your beginning level was something like the Mavic Mini or the um, the Femi X8 likes up there um, now the X8 I think the thing with the X8 is it kind of gives you the feeling that it might be close to a Mavic Air or more close to an air rather than the mini which is a bit smaller a bit lighter it, it can't handle the wind as much as say uh, the Femi up there um, so originally I bought the mini first the mini one um, and you know it's it, it was the first drone that when I just it took off it sat perfectly in front of you it did everything you know it's basically exactly what you want in a drone when you're somebody who's like oh I want to just fly a drone around get good footage have fun flying a, a drone you know basically even if it's not about the footage it's about flying around and you know it goes where you want it to it goes up and down when you want it to it goes side to side when you want it to I've never had that experience with a drone before it was almost like uncontrollable like what's going on 
that drone, the Mavic Mini 1, was the first drone where you put it up, it sat there on, on the spot. Um, but it had issues with wind and that kind of thing. It's still a great drone, and I think definitely, oh, and um, signal, but it's definitely a great drone. It's one of those drones that just don't think about getting anything less than that. I just, I, at the moment, I don't feel like there's much out there that's better than like the mini one for the beginning drone that is the beginner's drone um, with the with the x8 they're a bit heavier you, you know with a mini you don't need the license in certainly not in the uk you don't need a license for it uh, with the femi x8 you do need to do an online course and get a license you have to pay nine pounds to be an operator uh, flyer id is free but essentially you need to um, so yeah it's the battery the battery's down 29 percent think it'll be okay um, but basically, yeah, the Femi X8, see, a lot of people will be making that decision between a Mini, Mini 2 maybe, and a Femi X8. Now, I think if I was a beginner starting completely from scratch, I, I, and I was, I don't regret getting the Mavic Mini. I don't regret it because it, 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 it gave me my first real drone that flew really well. It's really good value. Yes, it can't handle the wind and the signal's not quite as good, but the Mini 2 is much better. Um, it, it, it's worth it, I think. I think the Femi X8 is probably a little step on again, where it's a little bit more heavier. You need to think about, you know, more about what you're doing with it, because I think if I could put it like this, if you flew a Mavic Mini fast towards a window, it would probably just hit the window and fall on the floor. I think the I think the Femi it feels a lot heavier. If you flew it towards a window and it hit that window, it would smash the window. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. I mean, the Mini might smash the window, depending on how fast you were going. But the Femi is a is a fast. It's a heavier drone. You know, it's a lot. It doesn't sit as nicely in the air. I mean, basically, let's let's get it to return home. Let's get it to return home because the battery's getting low. But we'll kind of get it here. Um, and we'll show you that it's a it's a heavier drone. I think it definitely it's not a bad drone. I think it's slightly cheaper than the Mini Two. So if you if you've got a budget, I think I think you couldn't go wrong with a Mini Two. Will it land on its um, on its landing pad? We'll find out. Um, you can't go wrong with the 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 X8. But I think personally, I would go for a Mini Two first and then move towards an X8. Um, and I, I had a, I had a choice. I I didn't know a Femi X8 would be worth doing. I watched other reviews before I started this channel, um, and they suggested Zenos, um, Hubs and Zenos, basically Femis, you know. And in the end, I made the decision to go for. It's coming down. Um, I made the decision to go with a Femi because, to me, the Hubsons let it land a sec. To me, the Hubs and Zenos, yes, they did things like 4K 60 frames a second. Oh, yeah, we're mowing the lawn. We're mowing the lawn for them. That's no problem. This this drone, you know, it can actually act as a uh, as a, a lawn mower as well, so it's not a problem. But yeah, basically, if I was to show you, you know, you get a decent controller, right? So you got to actually, you got to turn off the filming on this one. So let's turn it off. Yeah. Um, and basically you get a decent controller so you get a decent controller look, your phone fits in there it fits you know if you've got a big phone this is this is important actually um, because the the mini one uh, and uh, the hubs and xenos the controllers are designed in a way that aren't so accommodating for larger phones they kind of expand out at the bottom but that you can see you could you could possibly get a tablet in between that like an ipad mini or i don't even maybe even a full-size ipad um i i, I wouldn't want to put a full-size ipad in there but you know maybe the antennas would be restricted but it, it's certainly you know you, you can see you get a decent controller with metal kind of um you know metal sticks it's a solid controller i, I you know and I, I quite like the new dji Mini 2 controllers because they they put the phone above the controller so again you get a wider space you know than what you would have done on the Mini 1. I think it works well if you've got larger phones and of course most people do nowadays. Um, so I'll just put the controller down there but yeah if I bring up the Femi the thing I like about it is that it's got a nice like metal underneath. It hasn't got any decent sensors you know you haven't got the you know you haven't got like you, you've got sensors for landing 
um, you know, your camera will basically try and compensate. But yeah, you've got, you've got landing sensors. You haven't got obstacle avoidance, which of course in a drone like the Mavic Air 2, which is like more this size, would have. But I think, you know, it's a big chunk of a drone with a decent camera, you're at 4K 30 frames a second. Um, the sensor in it is actually smaller than the Mini 2 and the Mini 1 sensor. So this is a 1 over 2.6 inch sensor, which, you know, is, I, you, you know, just basically for some reason, what this is, this is the, the higher the number, the worse. So basically this is one point, this is one over 2.6 inches, which is around about, I think seven millimeters, the, diagonal um, of the sensor and basically the bigger the sensor you get in a camera the better picture quality you, you potentially can get because it lets more light in you get more you get more pixels you get more everything to deal with so you know that that, that it, it's a smaller sensor than the mini the mini one only did 2.7k but the mini two has the same sensor in it as the Mini 1, which is slightly bigger than this sensor, but can now do 4K. So I'm guessing DJI changed a bit around in the in the internals to allow that sensor to record in 4K 30. Um, this is capable 4K 30. But anyway, back to what I was saying about whether you should get a Xeno 2 or a Femi X8. My decision was made because I watched reviews where people were saying really that the Hubson felt more like a toy drone yeah swan having a good old fight over there trying to fly i think it's trying to fly off actually can swans fly they can can't they yeah it is flying yeah anyway back to the <laughs> back to what we we're talking about so yeah the hubs so basically a lot of people would be making this decision do i get a mini do i get a mini 2 do i get an femi x8 do i get a xeno two or one of the Xenos. Now what I found when I watched the reviews about it, and I haven't got a Xeno two, so I can't 100% say it's right, but I, I feel very confident. The, the reviews that I've seen of the Xeno two, it was like it was a toy drone that had internals in it that were more akin to like a better drone. So the, the casing was a lot cheaper, the battery, there wasn't this nice metal feel underneath you know, decent bit of housing. And in the end, this was cheaper than the Hubs and Xeno 2. It only did 4K 30 rather than 4K 60, but I didn't really understand cameras at the time. And from, from what I'd learned, 4K 30 is fine unless you're trying to do slow-mo videos. Now, I don't know, are people doing slow-mo videos with drones? Probably not. So really, I mean, if you're filming the drone in the air, that's a different camera, of course, and you can do a slow-mo of it moving around. But are you really filming your film to slow it down? I don't think so. So really it was, it's again, people think, oh, 4K 60, that's gonna be better, right? But there's a lot involved. There's sensor size, there's quality of the sensor, who made the sensor. I mean, I believe this is a Sony sensor in here, so it's a decent sensor. Um, and really at the end of the day, I went for the Femi because it feels more substantial. It's a more substantial drone. All the reviewers were kind of like, yeah, it's a weightier drone. It's a, it just doesn't feel like a toy. The battery is well designed to fit in the top. It can't fall out. With the, with the Xenos, it was kind of like slide in and there was a big hole underneath it if you pulled it out. Um, you know, maybe I will eventually try a Xeno, but I just, I've kind of not really regretted it at all, just based on all the videos I've seen since. Um, and it just seemed to have a lot more issues with the Xenos as well. There was a lot of, you know people saying i oh, sent it back and you know had to get re replacements and to be honest apart from the crooked horizon on this i don't think we've really had any problems and you know unless you're a professional filmer of drones are you really going to worry about that crooked horizon so much will people even notice it so um you know you're going to be chopping bits out of footage anyway so you might be turning and i don't know um you know, maybe the BBC won't film their wildlife programs on it, <laughs> but for you at home with a decent, you know, with a with a hobby and taking a drone out, this is this is good. Um, if you want a non crooked horizon, get a Mavic Air 2. You know, that's the that's the next next one up. I'm, I don't know if the Xenos particularly don't have crooked horizons either. I think they do. So, yeah, I think they both suffer with similar problems. So. But anyway, yeah, I thought I'd sort of um, share my thoughts on the new uh, firmware update and whether it's improved anything. Um, 
not sure it really has. I don't think the motion um, tracking stuff, you know, basically smart tracking features, I don't think they've been improved. So um, I don't know. I mean, we'll take a look at the footage and see if the footage looks a bit better. I think it's probably very unlikely that there will be any difference. Um, you know, so yeah, but it's still a good drone. I, it was a good drone before the update and you know, we've had very little problems with it. So we, we've always been happy with it. So yeah, thanks very much for watching. I hope you found that advice useful. If you did, please click subscribe, please click like. I mean, it's really helpful if you click like because it helps the video popularity makes us feel better about doing the videos and wanting to come out. So please click the like button. Um, please share to people if you can, ask other people you know to subscribe if you like, you know, think they'll like this kind of content. So thanks very much for watching. We really appreciate it. We'll see you again in the next one.